Hi guys, uh, yeah, so since we're stuck at home, um, well first off, I hope you're all doing, doing okay, keeping sane and staying well, but yeah, since we're stuck at home, I thought I'd do you a mini series um, looking at some of the arrangements we've done over the last year and kind of how we piece them together and kind of the effects we use to get the effects we got in the song. So I thought it'd be a pretty cool thing to do. So the first one to start off with is going to be Breathe, which we did the start of last year. Um, Breathe by Ina Roldson and Jax Jones. So with all these, I recommend you listen to our version and also listen to the original version before you watch this so you can kind of compare. Um, I'll put the links to those in the, in the description at the top. But yeah, so we're going to start with Breathe. The reason Breathe is a really good one to start off with is because basically I remember hearing it on the radio and kind of listening to it and I thought, how many parts can I pick out? I can only pick out about five or six parts and this is when we were first Going, to, going down to a five-man group. So I thought, actually, let's have a go at putting this together because this will be a really good one to kind of start off with, just try and mimic the song. Um, and it was in a very Sons of Pitches kind of clubby style, which, which was good as well. So, so yeah, so it's a really nice one to start off with because our arrangement is very similar to the song and it's more about trying to copy the sounds in the song. And then I'll give you some insight into kind of the techniques we use to do that. So, um, so yeah, so I'll just play it from the start. And I'll stop it at bits and pieces and talk you through bits and bobs. So. <laughs> So yeah, let's go back to the start of that. So the thing I really want you to focus on here is Josh, because he's doing, basically the bass sound he's doing is a DM, so a dum, and that's what we use a lot of the time, and it's really, really important that we use that in this particular place. So it sounds like this. And what you can hear is the, the D is giving it a really definitive start, which means when it's, because it's because it's quite tight, I'll have me day in. So if you can hear that, me and Josh are not on the same beats all the time. So it's really important that Josh is really tight on where his notes start so that you can hear the definite rhythm. And then also you've got Bellum on top, who's also doing a slightly different rhythm to Josh. It's pretty much the same, but it's got a, a bit uh, bits different here and there. So the thing to watch here is Josh is on a D&M, so he's got the dum which gives it a really definite start. And bells as well, if you listen to him. He's got a, a he's kind of doing a gong. Gong, 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 gong. And the G as well, the kind of putting those hard consonants on, a really good way of starting a rhythmic thing. Because we've got, like I said, we've got three different rhythms going on. And Mide's obviously really clear because his sounds are really snappy but this makes Josh and Bells' also really clear so it doesn't get clouded with the different rhythms. So you can hear that everything's really tight and you can tell where everything lies. So that's a really important thing when we're arranging stuff. If you want these tight rhythms, it's really good to put those hard consonants on the start of the sound because it really tightens it up and you can hear exactly when the note's starting. Whereas if, for example, if Bells was just going, or something like that without a hard consonant on, it's really hard to tell exactly where that note's starting. As soon as you put that in with other things, it just becomes a big mess. So that's kind of my, the first trick we use there. So let's see, where should we go? So I'll skip this bit. Here we go. So now we're into the chorus. So chorus, let's focus on Mide. So Mide is obviously an incredible beatboxer and one of the things he does is throat bass, which is this sound that you can hear amongst his beats. The pitched kind of, I can't do it, so I'm not even gonna try. But the, uh, the really low bass sounds. So that is actually what we decided to be the kind of main drive of the bass in this section. So if I put it all together again, this is what you're hearing. So Mide is really leading that bass there. So we've also got Josh on bass though because we wanted a kind of bigger, fatter bass sound. But here, because Mide is really driving the rhythm, 
we felt we didn't need to have Josh on such a, so like I said in the verse, he was doing those dums, which are really definite. Here, we didn't want something to be as definite. It didn't need to be driving the bass because Mide's doing that. All we wanted Josh to do was kind of supplement to that subbiness, the kind of sub bass sound. So you'll see, instead of doing a dum, he's doing this here. So it's kind of more like a, a really like glottal boom, a G, a kind of GN sound. And what that does, he's still got the G, which is, you know, it's got the consonant, but it's a lot softer than that dum. And also if you kind of sing dum, 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 it's quite kind of forward in your, for, it's nat e easy to sing it naturally forward. Whereas the gum, 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 it just sits a bit further back. So you get that dum, dum, gum, gum, dum, dum, gum, gum. It's a bit more kind of sat back and really kind of takes a back seat. But also in the bass register, you can hear it's just a lot more, if he puts it even further back, it becomes really subby. So rather than being gum, 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 it's gum, 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 gum. It's a lot more sat back, which then really gives it that nice round bass sound. So then together, basically you've got Mide doing the sharp, that's kind of the sound of the bass and Josh is just adding to the to the bassiness of it, if that makes sense. He's just adding to kind of the background of the bass to make it feel bigger. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to look at was Bellum here in the chorus. This is another good trick that, well, it's not really a trick, it's just something to be aware of when you're arranging. So, there we go. This bit now. <laughs> So Bells comes in with this synth riff in the second half, the do -ka -do -hoo, do -do. and what I want to talk about is we c he's basically doing a do, and then that you, you the initial thought you'd have was just to be go do -do -do -do, do 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 just straight with the do's, but what he's done is he's gone do -ka do -hoo. basically a d rather than d d d d do 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 he's gone d g d h do -ka do -hoo. Basically, just for kind of a more natural phrase. So rather than do 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 do, which is you know quite, it really feels like you're pushing every note out. He's gone do 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 do, which is a lot more kind of natural and has has more of a flow. And that's kind of the same with everything when you're arranging these bits. You really want everything to a be the easier it is to sing, the, the better it's going to sound because you're going to be able to um, you're going to be able to kind of place it better on your voice and support it better. But also, um, you want to think of the, the emphasis. So we don't want du 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 because it's more du du du. The second note sits back a bit. So the D G D du 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 rather than du 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 makes it a lot more kind of, it fits the flow better because it has that rocking back and forth where the Ds are forward and the Gs are behind. So let's listen to it one more time. And you can just hear it just kind of sits, I'll turn them up. It just sits kind of really nicely on top with that. <laughs> But I don't want to sleep, it's water. There he goes. It just feels really natural, it just has a really good flow, and that's because of the choice of the consonants at the start. So, next bit, we are going to jump to verse 2. So, this is the verse here. So, just this section now. So yeah, so basically this is just a nice use of a three-part harmony. And now that we're a five-man group, this is kind of the biggest texture we can get in a live sound because we've got Josh doing the bass and then the three of us are all singing the same thing in harmony. And that kind of gives us the biggest sound. So we kind of save these three-part harmonies now for like the, the peak of the arrangement. So this was kind of the second verse. It needs to be bigger than the first verse. And also it's a nice kind of progression from all the synth sounds we've got before where it's just kind of rhythmic synth lines. And now we've got a nice full three-part harmony. So that's kind of a tool we use. And you, we throw in a lot of our arrangements to kind of make everything feel like it's stepped up because that's just a bigger sound having the, the three voices on top of each other all kind of singing the same thing. So yeah, it just feels a lot fuller and a lot bigger and it feels like we've gone somewhere from the bit before. So it's really nice. 
breathe. And then we go back to uh, chorus two. Skip ahead a bit. Yeah, so this is the inter interlude we added. And then... So here's me, me, Heinze and Bell's doing exactly the same thing, but what we've done is just change the bass line up just to, just to give it a bit of a feel like it's something different so it's not so repetitive. So as you can hear, this is what Josh... So he's just climbing it down there. And we've just gone... As you can hear already, we've just kind of inverted the, the pattern of movement there, just to give it a different feel. And that's a really easy thing to do because you know, we're sitting in this uh, this key, so all, we know what kind of notes work together, and you can kind of change the bass line there, just to give it a give it a different feel and make the chords feel like they're going somewhere else, which is just a nice way to add variety. So that's that's what we've done there. And then the last thing I want to show is just yeah, jump ahead dun, to the da, very end. Keep dun, going. Da, 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 So yeah, so there we've basically just used an effect that we like to call kind of a filter, which um, kind of mimics the, the the idea of this EQ being kind of sweet, swept across. So um, so that kind of sound of it being next door to then emerging to being right next to you, that kind of, you'll, you'll hear it again, I'll play it one more time. So it starts really closed and it just opens up slowly. Then we close it again. And then start opening it. So you can really hear this. I'm gonna just play me and Heinze because you can hear it quite, quite clearly. Yeah, so that's, that's a really uh, nice technique we like to use on these kind of electronic tracks because um, basically it gets that effect of that filter coming off. So. All we have to do is keep our mouths really kind of tight when we start and open that up to a wider mouth. And basically it's all about the shape of your mouth. You're singing the same thing, but that mouth shape is just changing our sound. So we're going. So all you're doing is opening and closing your mouth and it's just opening up that filter from a really closed sound into an open sound. And you can just, it kind of, yeah, it gives that really cool electronic um, sound. And Mide's doing it as well. Um, obviously his is a bit more, well, probably a bit more complicated. So you can hear it here. So he's got it in his throat and you can hear. Then it's coming out. And the same again. Really. And then you can hear it. And that's just kind of opening up. So, so yeah, that's kind of our, what we, we like to call it, uh, filtering it or putting it in the pan, kind of covering the pan with the lid and then kind of slowly opening a lid. So it's that opening out sound. But yeah, but that's, um, there you go. That's a quick kind of insight into our arrangement of breathe. Um, yeah, I hope some of those techniques kind of help you think about how you could maybe uh, put those into practice, try different things. And yeah, it's really a good, a good example of using kind of sounds and consonants and uh, mouth shapes in different ways to produce different notes and for different, sorry, to produce different sounds and also for uh, different purposes to get different effects. So yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's my little rundown of Breathe and uh, see you soon. Have a good.